traders, welcome to a new day trading strategy video of mine. Today's video is going to be on Bitcoin exchanges. We're going to be looking at five exchanges and evaluating the pros and cons of each. If I didn't mention exchange today that you would like me to talk about in part two of analyzing exchanges, then you can comment below which exchange you would like me to cover. So as you can see, this was the most Patreon suggested video with more interest in interpreting interest rates than I would have expected. So I wanted to analyze five different metrics for each one of these five exchanges to do a point system uh, out of five, I know, a lot of fives, uh, to find what is the best exchange in its category. And I looked at these five exchanges here. Coinbase Pro recently got rebranded. It used to be called GDAX, and now it's called Coinbase Pro. Uh, so just to clear up that confusion for any users that might have that. So Binance. Binance fees are really on average the lowest of all five exchanges. It is 0.05% or 1 20th of a percent for buying and selling if you use Binance Coin. Additionally, there are identical fees for both market orders and for limit orders, meaning that you don't have to worry about paying extra fees for market orders that you typically would on most other exchanges. Liquidity on Binance, I found that my limit orders have had very little trouble in getting filled. And when I use a market order, my market orders have been able to get filled at a single bid or at a single offer just about each time on major volume coins. Security on Binance has been quite fantastic as well. I did some research on any hacks or any flash crashes that Binance may have had, and I found that Binance had not one hack. Uh, Binance has never been hacked, and Binance has never had a major flash crash of a major uh, volume coin. Additionally, their security with user accounts, uh, from what I read online, has been quite good as well. I haven't read many issues of users having their funds in limbo or having their funds uh, lost or stolen either. Uh, which is good news for users who want a safe exchange to trade on. Trading options, they offer many coins to trade on. However, they do not allow one to short, and they also do not allow traders to margin trade on Binance. Uh, they do not do lending, and they only allow traders to deposit either USD Tether, to deposit Bitcoin, or to deposit Ethereum, uh, or to deposit BNB. Because of this, there's no fiat trading allowed with Binance unless you're in a country outside of the US. Uh, hopefully Binance is able to bring fiat trading to the United States, but uh, as of now, it looks like it might not. And finally, this site I would say is very user-friendly for beginners. It has a basic and an advanced interface if you go to the top left portion of Binance. Uh, the account settings has been great as well and they were able to explain their fee structure and the way that their exchange works in a quite clear way. So really, user-friendly wise, I think they deserve 100%. Overall, I would give them a 24 out of 25. Coinbase Pro. Coinbase Pro fees on average are 0.15%. This is because limit orders carry 0% fees, no fees, and market orders carry 0.3% fees at the base rate of volume. This means that there's a large incentive to use a limit order and not a large incentive to use a market order. That's good for traders who like to patiently use limit orders, but that can cause a major issue in liquidity. Trying to get your limit order filled on Coinbase Pro can be very difficult. Uh, there are many other HFTs and faster traders who are gonna get their limit orders filled before normal retail, retail traders typically do. And when you do get your limit order filled on Coinbase Pro, that's likely because not many others are trying to get their limit order filled, meaning that price might just continue to move against you. So because of this, I can't really give them anything higher than a three out of five on liquidity. The only reason I gave them a three out of five was that because there are so many limit orders on Coinbase Pro, using a market order is actually not a terrible idea besides the 0.3% fees, uh, because you can really fill your entire order at, at a bid or at an offer the high majority of the time when bid walls of 100 plus Bitcoin spring up quite, uh, quite often. Security on Coinbase Pro, 
I read a few issues of users who had accounts in Limbo. So what this means is when you deposit to an exchange, uh, but the coin you deposit or the amount of money you deposit never comes to the exchange. So some users I read had issues of months on hold where their funds have, ne have, have not even left um, to go to the exchange, but, they, it, but the funds did leave their bank account, which can be a little bit scary when your funds are you know, in limbo like that. That, of, of course, though, that is on an individual basis. Personally, I have had no issues with more than a week wait for transferring anything to Coinbase Pro. Additionally, the reason I gave him a three out of five on security was not just those few accounts who had their accounts uh, uh, in limbo, but there was a flash crash of Ethereum that occurred on Coinbase Pro, which may have caused some traders to sell at very, very bad rates. And also there have been hacks on Coinbase Pro and Coinbase itself, uh, which can be a disincentive for using the service. However, I've used it many times for about a year, uh, GDAX, Coinbase Pro, and I've had no issues with any of that. But uh, DYOR, do your own research uh, as per usual. Trading options, Coinbase Pro does not offer a lot of different trading options. You're, you cannot short, you can't lend, uh, they don't allow margin trading, and they only allow a few coins to trade uh, to the dollar and a few coins to trade to Bitcoin or to trade to Ethereum. This is a great service for traders who just want a few coins to pay no fees uh, for mostly beginners. This is not probably the service that a uh, trader who would like to diversify his portfolio would, would likely want to use. Uh, I would recommend using a different exchange if you're going for that kind of route. I did give them a five out of five on user-friendly because when you go on to Coinbase Pro, their interface is very clear, their fee structure is very clear, and their market order, uh, limit order, and stop loss and stop limit are all available just in the bottom left portion of Coinbase Pro. You can see the order book, you can see the trade history right in front of uh, when you visit the exchange. So uh, a very user-friendly site. For beginners. Bitfinex. Bitfinex fees are 0.1% for maker and 0.2% for taker. Liquidity on Bitfinex is fantastic as they are the leading volume exchange alongside Binance. Security on Bitfinex is also quite good. I really have not read many issues of users having their accounts in limbo or users having their accounts stolen or lost. Trading options, Bitfinex definitely is, I would say, number one in the category of trading options. Bitfinex allows you to lend Bitcoin, allows you to lend USD, it allows you to borrow Bitcoin, allows you to borrow USD if you want to leverage or trade margin, it allows you to short, and it also allows you to trade more coins than Binance. Uh, so because of this, trading options, they really do offer a wealth of coins and a wealth of different kinds of trading strategies that one could use to make money on Bitfinex. Also, the site is very upfront about their fee structure and also about how you can lend or borrow funds. Uh, so user-friendly, I, I would give them a five out of five for this. Their exchange itself with the order book and with the order history is also quite clear. And placing a market order and placing a limit order is uh, very easy on Bitfinex. So overall, I think they deserve their 23 out of 25. BitMEX. BitMEX fees can be complicated uh, as the funding changes every eight hours and the BitMEX fees are very dependent on how many contracts you leverage. So definitely DYOR on this one. Um, but I give them a four out of five because they offer a rebate for maker and they offer a slight fee for taker. The main issue though with uh, taker and using 100X leverage is that what many beginner users don't know is that the 0.075% um, fee for, for taker is going to be 100x if you take on 100x contracts, which is going to be a, a pretty large fee of about 7.5% uh, total. Because of this, this could wipe out some traders' accounts very quickly. Um, so this fee structure, do be very careful when you're trading high leverage on BitMEX because one move against you and you could get liquidated very easily with high leverage, or just sell break even or buy break even uh, and have to pay a pretty hefty fee on your overall account. 
Liquidity on BitMEX is usually pretty good. The only reason I docked him one point is because that the funding changes every eight hours where either longs pay shorts or shorts pay longs. And this can cause issues when there are many longs in the market and you're trying to get your limit order filled to try to get a rebate of 0.025%. Uh, but beyond that, I don't think there's too many liquidity issues on BitMEX. Security on BitMEX is not fantastic from what I've done uh, research on. I've read many accounts of users who had their funds uh, stolen or had their funds taken or had their funds lost completely. I also read many users who lost a lot of money very quickly due to the high leverage uh, on, on BitMEX as well. However, BitMEX has never been hacked uh, on a large scale, which is a, a pretty good sign of the safety of an exchange. But on an individual basis, I think that BitMEX can be a little bit dodgy at times. So definitely do be careful um, using this site. Trading options, BitMEX is relatively good. They allow leverage, they allow one to short, they allow one to long, and they allow uh, one to trade multiple coins as well. So four out of five I think is justified. The only reason I docked them one point is because you are not allowed to deposit fiat onto BitMEX. You have to deposit Bitcoin. Uh, so I think, I think that that's warranted. The site is not user friendly. Uh, and I think that the majority of this three out of five comes from the fact that funding and fees on BitMEX are a little bit complicated in, in themselves. And you're gonna have to read multiple pages of how exactly that works to take advantage of the BitMEX fees. Because of that, this cannot lead to a user friendly interface where beginners can use this site and completely understand the fees within a few minutes. I think you got to take your time first and really understanding how this site operates, uh, and then you can take the most advantage of this site. But uh, beginner, user-friendly, I, I would say that this one is not really that good in that category. So 18 out of 25. Our final exchange here that we have is Poloniex, an exchange that I've used frequently in the past before I switched over to Binance. Fees on Poloniex are 0.1% for maker, 0.2% for taker and pretty much standard across the board for other exchanges as well, such as Bitfinex. Liquidity on Poloniex is probably their weakest point. Uh, not as many traders trade on this site as they do the other four exchanges, which can lead to issues where your limit order might not get filled or your market order might not be executed on one bid or on one offer because there just aren't that many bids and offers on that coin. Security on Poloniex, I did read that there have been hacks and there have been funds lost from the security on Poloniex. Um, however, this did occur in 2014 where a major hack wiped out about 12.8% of the Bitcoin owed on Poloniex. Poloniex was recently acquired by Circle, meaning that they're probably gonna be implementing new safety features and uh, as they already have what they, when they lowered their fees to 0.1 and 0.2. So I would say that Poloniex is probably going to become a safer exchange in the coming months uh, as they've been acquired by a large company. User-friendly, I have to give these guys a 3 out of 5. Uh, the site itself is not really that clear of how you can uh, margin trade, of how you can lend, of how you can borrow. And the user interface itself I find to be not the most attractive. So because of these two factors, I had to give them a 3 out of 5 in this regard. And that gives them a 17 out of 25 for that. Trading options, though, they do offer uh, lending, they offer uh, margin trading, they, allow, they offer leverage, and they offer one to short altcoins that are not um, Bitcoin. So you cannot short BTC USD Tether on Poloniex, but you can, you, you can short altcoins, uh, which can be quite helpful in a bear market. So that's going to do it for the five exchanges that I've gone over today. Again, if you have any other exchange that was not mentioned today, feel free to mention in the comments below, and I might be able to pick it up for a part two or a part three of this series. Of course, all of these scores are dependent on how I ranked them. This is not going to be true for uh, every user's experience. Some may hate Binance and love Poloniex. Some may love Poloniex and hate Binance and and you know so on. But just ranking off of these five metrics, I found that it's really Binance and BitMEX that have been uh, really the ones that have struck high in the uh, report card here.
So as per usual, DYOR and happy trading.